Besties, it's your girl Sheridan, and I'm back, back, back with yet another video. Hey, y'all, y'all, ah! I'm on 147. Y'all know how people say they on 10. I'm on 147. Okay, <laughs> 147. Y'all can already see by the title who I have in here with me. And before I bring her up, let me just say I want to thank you, besties. Uh, y'all been sending uh super thanks and super chats and all the things y'all have been purchasing the when it girls pray prayer journal well pre-ordering it and i just want to tell you guys thank you thank you thank you so much i can't wait for y'all to get these journals um and i pray that y'all love them so let me introduce our guest for faith and friday y'all this is the finale of season one of faith and friday so you guys one day I am watching um, uh, King Talks with Mimi, and she is talking about this one vlogger. Now, I got introduced to the vlogger sphere a few years ago, and I'm seeing people document their lives like it's a reality show. And I'm like, I want in. I want to. I want to do that. Like it's dope. And I know that I'm a bit different. I'm like this church girl and stuff like that. So I'm like, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be successful. I'm watching Mimi and she says, well, y'all know Peyton because Peyton going on the travel vlog. And when y'all have her, she she make us feel like we there with her. And I said, baby, who is Peyton? Y'all, I went and I binge watched the Maldives travel vlog. I went from Maldives to, to here, there, and everywhere. And I binge watched her series, Living Alone in Dallas. And I felt like... This girl needs all the awards. She is so personable herself. I love a girl from Memphis. Uh, I love the accent. And she's just who she is. And that's why we love her so much. Um, she has become my big sis. And she is a Miss Sister Girl. And, and what about it herself? Y'all give it up for Peyton Marie Charles. Yeah! Y'all see who we got in here, besties? Hey, y'all. <laughs> y'all give it up for Peyton. Make sure y'all give him all type of hearts and likes and all the things. Thank and you so much for the intro. That was so beautiful. So, you guys, we are here for Faith It Friday. And for Faith It Friday, it is my objective. I already told y'all I'm a church girl. Now, you ain't got to be churchy to be on Faith It Friday. But everybody... Um, who is a believer in God, like, I feel like you have a story and it can be so inspirational. Um, everybody on Faith and Friday has at least 15,000 subscribers. That to me is beautiful. That's no easy feat. Um, some of you guys have accomplished that in two years. That is nothing easy. And I feel like for so many of us who are up and coming content creators, um, we can listen to your faith journey, whether you have, um, because you have faith in yourself, faith in your brand and faith in God and your faith journey can inspire others. So that is why I brought Peyton here because honey, she has a journey. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. So my first question to you is when you were a little girl, how did you dream your life would be? Like, what was your dream career? I want to be a lawyer. I can see I, that. I, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I was obsessed with the Cosby show and I, I love the dynamic of the show. You know, you get the uh, the husband who's a doctor and the, the wife who's a lawyer. And I wanted to be Claire Huxable. I, I looked up to her so much. I didn't have that dynamic in my family and my upbringing. Um, not to take anything away from my grandmother, but I just I didn't have that. And it gave me something to look forward to and something to look someone to look up to. Besides um, my grandma, who was who was my def definitely my role model. But, yeah, I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a corporate lawyer at first. Okay. Uh huh. And then I got once I actually like got closer to like going to college, it kept changing. Mm. Mm -hmm. OK, we're going to get into it. So you Spoke about your grandmother. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you this. Was your family influential in helping you to cultivate your dreams? So some people come from families like the Hiltons or the Winans family, you know, where they're well off, uh, maybe financially or have a big name. But some of us are the first success stories that 
we've seen in our family. So how did your background aid or hinder your success? Um, it definitely helped. Um, but I didn't have one of those silver spoon upbringings. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like I saw my grandma struggle. I saw my mom struggle. At, you know, I, I saw everybody struggle and I just didn't want to struggle. Yeah. I didn't want that. I didn't want that for my life. Um, and yeah, I, I wanted better. So I would definitely say like my upbringing, I, I was raised on survival. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I guess that does that answer the question? Yeah, it does. And it makes me ask you this question because a lot of people who watch you, they know you did um, go into the military. Mm-hmm. What made you make that decision to go to the service? Um, I did not have money and I did not have the grades. I did not know that I was as smart as I was because mm-hmm. like um, my grandma just, I mean, she, she was okay with C's. She was okay with D's as long as you passed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so me knowing that I just really didn't like apply myself a lot in school. So I didn't have the best GPA graduating high school. And I, I was just like, okay, I'm not going to get in college. I'm not going to get a scholarship with this GPA. So I'm going to have to like go to the, the military to pay for college. So that's why I went. That's, yeah. that's honestly why I went. That's, real because I did not have a high GPA either. Um, although I was very smart, like every, all my teachers would tell you that I was smart, (laughs) but I didn't want to do no homework. I hated school. And most of the reason why I hated school was because, um, I was kind of like tormented at school. I had a lot of anxiety and I was like, I don't want to do this. And I didn't, (laughs) I passed, but you know what I'm saying? Like I didn't fully apply myself. So People who know you or are familiar with your platform, you are a digital content creator, but you're also an influencer. When I tell you, you definitely influenced me. I I got some skin potion around here somewhere. You influenced me crazy. I just bought some factor meals the other day. Like <laughs> They're good. I ain't, I'm about to eat one when I get off live with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just placed my first order. And for me, um, like a lot of the girls, and this is actually no shade. I, I'm serious about this. Have the wig sponsors and the clothes sponsors and all this type of stuff. But Peyton, you setting a whole new bar for the black girls. Like honestly, oh, and you. that's part of why I love you because it's not. It don't just stop at aesthetics. Um, the term influencer though is very fairly new. Um, when did you know you wanted to be an influencer? If you could just tell us like your beginner influencer story. Um, I didn't know I wanted to be an influencer. I I didn't, it it just kind of like happened. Right. So Mm -hmm. when I first started vlogging, if you go back and watch one of my first, first vlog, first or second vlog, I'm talking about some iced coffee because I wanted to start, you know, I had been influenced to try iced coffee, but I went in the grocery store and I just didn't know what to pick. You know what I'm saying? Because when I would watch videos, I would see girls adding all these different ingredients. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I mean, is this something I already put together? So I started, (laughs) I started buying international coffee. I was getting like the mocha one or something like that. And I was showing it in my vlogs all the time. And next thing you know, like people that was watching my vlogs was always retweeting it, reposting it, tagging international coffee. And I'm like, okay, I mean, I, I might give me a little sponsorship deal. You know what I'm saying? So that- Oh, my bad, Peyton. I hate to interrupt you, sis, but besties, have you not heard? Our prayer journal, When It Girls Pray, is available for pre-order right now. Y'all go to whenitgirlspray.com. Check out all the merch, but especially the When It Girls Pray prayer journal. Whenitgirlspray.com. Use Bestie15 as their code to get 15% off. Now back to Peyton. So that's when I saw that I had an influence, and then I started talking about perfume and that's when I realized that I had an influence, but I didn't start it to be an influencer. I just was bored. And you know, yeah, I really did. I, I was bored, girl. I, I I had a camera. I had a vlogging camera. And Texas wasn't closed down like the rest of the world in 2020 when we were supposed to be quarantined. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get outside and, you know, vlog my life. Hated my camera, hated the footage, mm-hmm. but I, I pushed through it. 
ended up meeting a guy. I was just out. You know what I'm saying? I met a guy and he bought me a, uh, he bought me the Sony ZV-1. And yeah, I just, I really like started tapping into the quality once I started taking it serious. But I didn't know I was an influencer for a long time. I didn't even know I was a content creator. I would just say, I do YouTube. I'm a YouTuber. Yeah. It's it's, it's so many different names now. I can't keep up. <laughs> Facts. Facts. But let me tell you, you mentioned the look of it all. Let me just tell you, that is 50 per 60% of why I have become the number one PayPal. Okay, like I y'all PayPal's too, okay. But I, I, I'm 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 the fan club president, okay? <laughs> when I tell you, and I'm going to tell you my favorite vlog on YouTube, you done got a lot of views off of me, baby. Curacao, and I'm going for next year for my birthday. Yes. When I tell you, because the thought that this lady, this little lady has traveled the world by herself, like... Who does that? And for you to say that a guy brought, bought you a camera, like, look at God. Like, it's just amazing to me. You have completely influenced me as far as uh, solo travel. Um, and there are some other YouTube girls, too. But um, the way you treat your channel, like, I know I'm watching a movie when I watch you. The editing is top tier. And I literally got my Sony ZV-1F because of your um, Amazon storefront. I was like, okay, she got a what? Oh, okay, that's what I need? Okay, well, we're going to Best Buy. And then, <laughs> let me get the intro one. Um, let me get the ZV-1F. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's, so, a good, it's really a good camera. It's very, like, great quality. Great yeah, quality. Absolutely. So, um, literally, you are talking about stumbling upon being an influencer. And I think oftentimes it's kind of like how God works. Like, you don't necessarily know all the time that you're about to pursue something that's about to be your purpose, but you stumble upon it. Um, but literally, the thought of being a full-time content creator is still taboo, even though content creators are making buku money. Mm -hmm. um, people are often suggesting that this isn't a real job. Um do you ever have anyone in your corner who has boosted your faith in this dream? Like, have you had friends in your corner? How has these relationships helped change or help your career? Uh, it was more so subscribers. Mm. It was definitely more so subscribers because um, when I came, I had quit YouTube. I had quit YouTube in 2017. I was gone for three years. I didn't post anything. And then I came back in 2020 after I lost my job, like I said, because I was bored and I was still looking for a job. You know, I was vlogging that whole process. Um, this was this honestly was not this was just not in my plans. Like I had planned to get another job. And you know what I'm saying? Like once everything went back to normal and we weren't quarantined anymore, I'd be back in the office, project manager, put the camera back down and, you know, live my private life as a project manager. But subscribers were like, Peyton, you are really good at this. You should continue vlogging. And I mean, this was early on, like this was before the aerial shots and all the cinematography. It was more so like point shoot and edit, you know, mm -hmm. and, and people still enjoyed the the content. I didn't I didn't realize I was that entertaining until I started like vlogging. <laughs> For real? Wow. Mm -hmm. oh. It was actually it was actually one of my um her name is Nikki. Mm -hmm. She follows me on Instagram and I would post I would I would post kind of like vlogs in my Instagram stories, right? But it wouldn't be like a vlog, but you would get like a lot of just like my personality on my Instagram stories. I used to be very, very candid on my Instagram stories. Like I would come on camera, you know, got my phone. I would have like acne stuff all over my face. And this one girl, her name's Nikki. And she was like, you know, have you ever considered vlogging? And I was like, oh girl, no, I am way too private. I would never. Mm -hmm. I don't even see how people like watch vlogs. I, I I never understood like why would somebody want to watch somebody else's life? I was like, I don't even think anybody would want to watch me. Child. I feel like my life would be, you know what I'm saying? Boring. Mm -hmm. 
She was like, you should look into it. Like, have you ever watched a vlog? So she started, she told me about Aaliyah and then I started watching Aaliyah. And from there I started watching Brianna and then Kyra. And those were like the three girls that I would watch every now and then. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I don't think I'd be able to do vlogs because when I watched them, I was just like, I don't, I, if that's, if that's like vlogging, I don't feel like I would be able to vlog because mm -hmm. I don't have that lifestyle. But then I picked up the camera and vlogged anyway, and here we are. Here we are. Amazing. We're going to get into your faith in God. So we've already kind of tapped into your beginnings. Tell me about a time. Actually, let's talk about your faith in yourself. Tell me about a time when you had to bet on yourself. Mm, I'm going to say in 2020. Yeah, in 2020, it was December. I was getting ready to do my vision board for 2021. And I put, I, I feel like I put a lot of attainable things on my vision board. But I also was, I also reached for the stars a, lo a little bit too on that vision board. And that was me betting on myself like, okay, um, yes, this is a vision board. You manifesting these things, but you also have to work towards these things as well. So, and it like like on on one of the things uh, I put a 800 credit score right. Mm -hmm. God ain't gonna do that, <laughs> right? God is not gonna fix your credit score, baby. You you can pray about you it, you can pray about it, but God ain't gonna fix your credit score. You got to work on it. That's something That's right. that you have to work on. So uh, you know, I, I realized that I had to bet on myself and invest in myself to to make sure that I would get the things and attain the things that I put on my vision board. And I never made another vision board after that because I gave myself time and grace to accomplish all of those things. I think I put some short-term goals on there, some some uh, long-term goals on there. Um, and I, I have attained most of it. But a lot of that was me betting on myself to make sure um, I, I did the work. That part. Because a lot of times people have faith in God like you were just talking about. And it's like, God gonna do this, God gonna do this. But we have to participate. It's all in the Bible even. Like, you got to participate. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the woman at the well or the the guy who was blind. Like, Jesus didn't just walk up to people like, bam, you healed. You have right. to want that. And so, right. I'm glad that you definitely mentioned that. I have a vision board, too. Sometimes I look at it, I'm like, whoo, child. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, what was I thinking when I did that? But I'm going to get to the things eventually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if you ever seen it that um it was like a special Issa Ray was doing and she talked about a vision her vision board and she put HBO on there. And I think this was like when she was doing YouTube. She put HBO on her vision board and wow. she's on HBO. You do you do you know Issa started out on YouTube? Yes, I did you know did? that. Yes, I am um, Issa Ray, Kev on State. That's what I was watching before I got into watching vlogs and then I started watching um, the vloggers that I was watching, though, were more so like family channels. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I didn't I wanted to document what I was doing. But I was also like, I ain't got a husband with a cherry. I ain't got none of that. <laughs> but then seeing you guys, you, Leah's face up in a place. I don't want to start naming people. A plethora other of the girls. See you guys, Rochelle Chanel, who I had um, episode one. Seeing y'all vlog your lives and y'all are single girls and y'all are doing, like y'all living. That made me feel like, hmm, okay, I could do it. You can. Yeah. Everybody can. Everybody yeah. can. It's, yeah. it's wrong for everybody. It definitely is. Everybody has their audience. Um, it's, it's, it's not a competition, even though sometimes, you know, different platforms will make it seem like you have competitors. Yeah, it's not a competition. That's right. It's wrong for everybody. I love that. So everyone has their own relationship with God. For you personally, how do you hear from God, and how do you build or cultivate that relationship between you and God? So I I feel like God is very um, up to date on like modern technology. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm <laughs> So with that being said, like I will pray, I will talk to God. And God knows that I be in my phone. Mm -hmm. So I get my I get my answers from my phone. Like, I mean, I 
it'll be things that I'm going through, Sheridan. I promise you, I, I'll be going through something and it'd be so it'd be so exact and specific. I'll pick up my phone. I'm not even following these pages. Mm -hmm. This new it, this new Instagram and the algorithm, I, I appreciate it so much because I feel like if I was if Instagram only showed me things from followers, I probably wouldn't hear from God like I hear from God. Mm. But I'm telling you, I'm, 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 I could be going through something with a man. I could be going through something with a friend. I, it could just be like the, the devil just busy. And I scroll and it'll be a message right there that I feel like is for me. And when I look, I'm looking to see, dog, do I follow this person? I'm not even following this person. So yeah. you would think this shouldn't yeah. be on my timeline. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's how that's how I get I get my answers on, you know, a, a lot of people probably wouldn't believe in it, but that's how I get my answer. I, I know some people pray and then they go to church and they get, you know, their validation from the pastor. But um, I don't really go to church like that. I probably need to start. I, I, I've went to Bishop T.D. Jakes a few times. I like his church. It's just it's very crowded and busy. I, I think mm -hmm. I like more intimate settings when it comes to churches, mm -hmm. but I love his messages. His messages, as well as his daughter's messages, are always on time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Baby, I stand Bishop Jakes and Sarah. Sarah's my girl, okay? <laughs> For sure. Um, and actually, I agree with you. I wouldn't not believe in that. I feel like God is speaking all the time, but sometimes we're not listening. Mm -hmm. um, and he speaks where you can hear him. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm in total agreement with that. Um, give us a scenario from your life where you know nobody but God pulled me out of this. Ooh, after my grandma died. I think he knew what was on my heart. Mm. I had already been kind of speaking on it and talking about it. I had prayed to him, like, please take me before you take my grandma, because I really don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I don't think I'm going to be able to do life without her. Um, I, I, and I think he knew what was in my mind and what was on my heart. And um, I was at work one day, and this white girl, one of my coworkers, she was a really sweet girl. Um, after I left that, that job, we lost touch but she gave me a prayer box and I, I never like believed in stuff like that you know what I'm saying but she gave me a prayer box and you know it had a little paper and pen in it and I wrote in it uh, a prayer to asking God to give me peace with my grandma passing because if if not like I mean I'm I cried every day I'm about to start crying now I cried every day Sheridan I was I was in shambles and I did not want to be here anymore and I think God knew that and everything that happened after that, you know, YouTube and stuff, it, it saved my life. And I just didn't want to do that to my daughter because I'm still affected by my mom taking her life. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I just didn't know that how, how 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 I was going to battle life without my grandma. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that God did send you the messages and stuff that you needed to pull you out of that situation. And speaking of Kyron, you are such a great mom. Thank you. Um, it is a beautiful thing to witness your journey with your daughter. I ain't never cried over no YouTube video before, honey. But when you said, my baby's with me, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> just ugly crying. And um, I'm just so grateful. Um, and I'm happy that all things work together for our good. So Thank you. How has your faith in God contributed or challenged your success as an influencer? A 100%. I talk to God about everything. I talk to him about my health, my wealth, my YouTube channel, um, my family, the battles with, you know, the whole situation with Karen and her father. I talk to him about everything and, and I give him all credit. He, he get all of the credit. Like, if I if I'm writing it down, you know, uh, some people call it petitions. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm if I'm writing a petition to God, or if I'm on my knees, or if I light a candle, it's all to Him. A lot of people don't believe that because I light candle, they don't believe that I'm talking to Him and all, I'm praying to Him. But baby, mm -hmm. He gets all the credit for this. I don't I don't know anything else but God. That's right. Yeah, I people nitpick. I don't have time for all that. Listen. <laughs> I don't have time for how. If you gonna get to them, get to them, and I'm glad you got to them. And that's it. Um, I I did see 
when uh like I said, when I found out who you were from Mimi's channel, I searched you, I started binge watching, and I did see a hater talking about the candles, and I was like, <laughs> just trolls, just people just being trolls. Um, so we just got a couple more questions and we're gonna get you up out of here. What is your advice to others who desire to become influencers or content creators? And I and I just learned this in a uh, in a you know seminar that I went to Vid Summit. I went to Vid Summit and there was a uh, attorney. She was doing a panel, and I already knew this, but I didn't know I didn't know that it had a name for it. Healthy boundaries, healthy mm -hmm. boundaries. Like you can get on this platform and and share, but you you need to have healthy boundaries because the internet is not therapy. If you feel like you need therapy, seek therapy, get therapy, heal when the camera off, but you, you cannot seek healing when the camera on because there are people who will scrutinize you for it, you know? So, so YouTube is YouTube's YouTube is awesome. It's an awesome platform and it's very lucrative. And there's so many different niches that you can tap into. You don't have to share your life. You could you could talk about things that you're passionate in, um, but just know that you you need to have healthy boundaries when it comes to being on any platform where you're talking about your personal life and your 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 personal business. I concur. I think that's beautiful advice. Thank you. So let's do some quick little fun questions. Okay. All right. What? Let's get to know you. What is your favorite food? Meatloaf. What? Okay. I can see that. Yeah. Okay. I'm meatloaf. trying not to. I'm trying to stop eating red meat, but man, meatloaf so damn good with some candy, <laughs> macaroni, cheese, and collard greens with corn listen, bread. That's another thing. Hey, okay. Listen. I've only been to Dallas once, and that was to your meet and greet, and which mm -hmm. is crazy because me and a lot of the girls from the meet and greet, we literally still communicate, and we're mm -hmm. talking about doing stuff together. So thank you for that. But um, I was only yeah, kind of loves you. I love her. She is my girl. <laughs> so we, I was only in Dallas for twenty four hours. I'm gonna have to come back so I can experience Dallas. Peyton, can you cook when I come to Dallas? Yeah, girl. I need a plate because the food be looking good on the wall. Thank bottom. you. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, I cook. Okay, okay. Okay, so that is your favorite food. What's your favorite restaurant? Oh, my favorite restaurant. Mm. Here? Anyway. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Piccadilly. Piccadilly. <laughs> Y'all, I'm over here thinking she about to say this fast. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, you see this thing, girl? Don't be no but old people in Piccadilly, baby. I love me some Piccadilly. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Favorite color? Green. Green. Okay. Favorite person? My favorite person is Kyron. I love it. I love it. Because she's so forgiving. She's so understanding, um, inquisitive, wise. I mean, the other day I was crying. We won't get into why, but I was crying. And she was like, Why are you crying, mom? And I was like, God is just good. I was just I was just grateful for God showing up in that moment because I felt like what had transpired, that was God. You know what I'm saying? We 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 real quick to give the devil a lot of credit. Be like the devil be deviling or, you know, the devil be easy. But a lot of times it just be God. God put something in your lap and you got to give credit to God. And I think in that moment, I, I was just gr so grateful that it was God because I had prayed the removal prayer. And mm -hmm. I felt like there was God showing up in that moment. And I was crying. And I, I was I told her, I'm just I'm just grateful. It's, it's a happy cry. And she was like, yeah, just I mean, don't be sad. Just talk to God about it. She's so wise. She's very spiritual, too. Karen, very spiritual. Girl, I heard her singing um, Take Me to the game. game. I said, you better go ahead, Kyra. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite Drake song? I just want to be successful. Hey, okay. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm going to say this. I found, why I found the scripture in the Bible, you know, I'll be sending you scriptures here and there. And it reminded me of you. 
So it's Proverbs 27 and 9, and I can't wait for one day you to put your fragrance lines together because I'm going to be the first paper out of buy fragrance. Yes. What's your scent palette? You know what? I am what do you gonna, like? I need to find. I'm finding it now. So I like um, unisex scents. Okay. I, I like that. I love the. So what you put me on that I love a couple of things. Number one, the um. Now I had the Killian Love. Don't be shy, but I didn't really like it. But with the Baccarat, it's amazing. Mm hmm. And then the doggone Tiziana Terence. Which one? Kirke or uh, Russell Pompey? Yes. The first one. How do you pronounce it? Kirke. Kirke. Baby, I had that on Sunday. And the me and the guy was like, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said the me and the God. Yes, girl. I, was, I had to preach at my church that they in the middle guy was like, um, I said, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I am building my <laughs> I'm building my scent palette now. Um, so yeah, I can't wait till you get your scent because whatever you put together, I'm getting it because your your nose really works. Um, Thank you. Look, Proverbs 27 and 9, the beginning of that scripture says oil and perfume make the heart glad and as soon as i saw that i thought of you yes so it does. Okay. it's a mood elevator okay, I'm gonna i did not know that i did not know that there was in the bible yes i'm gonna send you know i'll be seeing a little script i i try to study every day um i do when it girls pray here on my youtube channel at 6 a.m on weekday mm -hmm. mornings mm -hmm. and i just pray with my besties and so, yeah, I'm in the, in the Bible every day. Like, and I, I just happened to stumble on this scripture. I was like, oh, this is Peyton. Okay. Is. So my final question for mm -hmm. you before we get up out of here is, what is next for Peyton? What's next? Oh, girl. Um, I just, you know what? I just, what's next for me is I, I feel like God has something planned. He, he getting ready to show out, but I don't know what it is. He, he knows that there are several things that I want to do, um, and I've put in place. So we just gonna have to see what God, what God has in store for me, because I'm, I'm going His path. I'm going His route where, where He wants me to go. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's not for me, I, I, I take another, go another direction. Absolutely. Same well, right now I'm trying to stay consistent with YouTube and um stay encouraged and um keep going after my goals because I'm still, you know, I'm still trying to have a hundred thousand views on each video. So I'm still working on I'm working on that goal. Okay. Well, you are absolutely an inspiration to me and so many other girls, honey. We be in the comments going up for you, and you know I got your back a hundred times over. This. So I did want to say this. I've been working on something and I'm gonna send you and Kyron a copy. I've been working on my own prayer journal. Please do. It's, it's called When It Girls Pray. And I'm gonna send you and Kyron a copy of it. Um one each so y'all can have a prayer journal because I just want y'all to have it and I just appreciate you have no idea how much I appreciate you taking your time to be here with me and the besties today so I real quick do you mind if I pray for you and then we can head out girl please I love your prayers you have the best prayers oh my god yes. thank you Peyton you that remember the first you. time you prayed for me I started crying yes I remember that yes come on yes. give me come on give me come on give me a good one <laughs> Okay. <laughs> God, we thank you so much uh, just for allowing us this time to be here together. The scripture declares that the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by God. God, I thank you that no matter what we go through, you ordered it, you ordained it. 
and you have graced us to be able to carry whatever crops we have to bear. I pray right now for Peyton and Kyron that you will cover them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, that you will perfect everything that is concerning them, oh God. I thank you that the scripture declares when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes come upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumble and fall. I thank you that no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper and that every tongue that rises up against them in judgment that you're going to condemn it. I thank you that everything that they need, you have already supplied it. I thank you, Lord God, that you have given her the gift of creativity and that it will never run dry. I pray right now that you would just build a fence of protection around Peyton and her family. I pray that no evil, no hurt, harm, or danger will come to them, but instead she will have exceeding joy knowing that you got her and she has you. And I give you all praise, honor, and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That was a good one. Coming on, Peyton. That was a good one. <laughs> Thank you so much for am, coming on, and I'm going to see you in these YouTube streets. Yes, ma'am, and I am praying that you become a millionaire before this year is over with with your prayer journals. I am praying that for you because you are such a good prayer. You are such a good person, and I absolutely love you. So beautiful. So beautiful. I, I, truly, I truly mean this, Sherrod, and I really do. Thank you. You're welcome. Girl, I thought you got me crying. <laughs> I really you are such a beautiful person. Thank you so much, sis. Well, I'll be in Dallas to eat. <laughs> <laughs> we all eat and pray together. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, Peyton. Well, you enjoy the rest of y'all night. Besties, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And y'all know y'all better already be PayPal's. God bless y'all and have God a good night. God bless y'all. Bye.